My name is uh, Wouter van Ooyen. I'm going to talk about WeStop Teaching C, which we did last year. That's me, and I brought a colleague of mine, Jorn Bunk, who's actually teaching that course and uh, prepared the materials for it. Um, I'll talk about uh, the context, our institute, what do we teach, uh, what's your curriculum, uh, what are recent tra changes in what we teach, then I'll shortly motivate why we skipped C now in our education. Jorn will talk about the experience we had in teaching C plus instead of C as a first step. And I'll draw some conclusions and I hope you have a lot of questions, otherwise we have a few. Okay, in uh, the Netherlands, uh, I don't know how it's in other countries, we have real universities, and we have University of Applied Science something like uh, polytechnics, or I don't know how we call it in Germany. We are of the latter part, we are the uh, HBO uh, in Utrecht. Within that uh, organization, we are the institute for HBO ICT, that's the combined ICT curriculum. And well, we run the specialization, uh, we call it technical, informatic, technical informatics in Dutch. I think it's computer engineering, maybe it should be computer science or something in between. It's not really clear to me. Uh, I, I like the Dutch word, but it doesn't translate well to other, other languages. We are about six lecturers who are, who are really dedicated to this specialization, and a few were half or a quarter or whatever. Um, in HBO ICT, uh, we combine uh, five specializations now, which range from uh, business information management, those are people with ties and talking to management who don't like programming, uh, all the way to down to uh, technical informatics, it's people who will never wear a tie and like soldering irons and wires and things like that. So it's, uh, it's an interesting combination. And recently the, the Dutch uh, institutions have come together and they prioritize a standard for how to characterize such educations. That's the HBO ICT matrix and we have to comply and uh, organize our education according that, to that standard. And uh, well, it, it's a matrix with uh, uh, the topic you do and the activity you do in the topic and with our uh, specialization we mostly in the hardware interfacing layer. And hardware should be taken very broadly. Everyone who is concerned about resources is in that layer from about so that's and the other uh, specializations are software information engineering. They basically do general software which is mostly databases and presenting data on devices, mobile devices, PCs, websites and things like that. And system network engineering they keep the infrastructure alive. They configure your Cisco routers and things like that, and they are the ones you complain to when things go wrong. Did I skip anyone? Oh, the new uh, specialization is Applied Artificial Intelligence. Uh, they try to uh, do the middle part, they don't know the hardware, they don't know the end user, but they do the complex algorithms in between. But that, that's just starting this year, so we'll have to see how well that works. This is the, the year year's program of the whole institute. We start with half a year uh, combined, so the, those courses are for all the specializations. Then we have one and a half year specific for each specialization, so that's the, uh, the focus point of what we do. And in the, uh, the last two years there is internships, there is uh, a minor which the student can choose more or less freely, and there is a uh, about half a year of projects which we try uh, to do uh, cross specializations. So we love to have a project that has both a business aspect and a technical aspect and some database and things like that. That's sometimes difficult, but it's what we try to do. Uh, are you familiar with the term with your European credit? That's the sort of metric for educational efforts. Uh, a full study is four years. That's Four times 60 is 240, uh, 240 European credits. Uh, so we have 30 credits common part, 90 credits specialization, and 240 for the last two years, the internships and the other more or less common things. The, our computer engineering specialization is about 
60 students annually. That's two or three classes, it varies a bit. Uh, we focus on close to the hardware embedded uh, con uh, resource constrained programming. And maybe that's partly due to me being there. It's often microcontrollers, that's what I like. And microcontrollers in C++. But there's also some uh, large embedded Linux side things, robotics and other related subjects. We mostly do C++, but also some Python, assembler, and we used to do a little bit of C. And uh, what, what's in our favor within the whole institute is that we work with physical stuff. The other specialization, they just have laptops and computers, but we have the robots, the blinking lights, the, why is my Arduino Due? Ah, my lovely, those things. And sometimes things drive around or the robot arms move and that uh, we have a physical focus point for activity and that, that's very good so that it creates a sense of a community uh, what works against is it that i don't know how it is in germany but in the netherlands especially the technical work is a bit frowned upon that says yeah it's for nerds and people who, who can't do anything else and nah, you put them in a the room somewhere else and you don't want to be there so that, that's a bit Contradiction, but that's how it is. And it's even more for girls. So we have very much problems to get the, <laughs> you're the one you the one here. Yeah. Um, I I would love to have a female young C embedded teacher. If you have one, please let her apply. Um, our uh, education is organized by quarters of a year and each quarter has two technical courses in the first six weeks and one group project in the last two weeks that's the for, for most part is that the, the organization uh, now I'll go through the whole curriculum uh, I hope I don't bore you too much we start with and uh, this is the part which is shared by all uh, specializations so we start with very light with programming in Python it must be acceptable to the guys with the ties uh, and some uh, general computer science and some ICT and business uh, things. Then in the second quarter, modeling, which is mostly database and use case modeling, not too much real time stuff. Uh, we have a new uh, um, course, which is Ask Critical Thinking and Logic and things like that. I hope it will be a, a nice one. And then there is a group project uh, which focuses on collaboration, use of agile techniques, and also for the students to uh, to decide which specialization they want to take. They, they come in in quarter one without a fixed idea of what they want to do. And the first half year should get them some idea of that. It somewhat works. After that, they've chosen one of the five specializations, assuming they've chosen, of course, the best one, technical informatics, the computer science. Uh, then we give a next programming course which is focused on algorithmic parts so it's it's in it used to be in c it's now in c plus plus but there's no object orientation or fancy stuff it's just basically walking through arrays and manipulating things and getting a feeling for how that works it could have been in any other language but c plus fits better in the total picture and the other uh, course is about operating systems which is focused on Linux, on Raspberry Pis, they have to, uh, everyone has to buy a Raspberry Pi, and if you technical informatics, you have to buy some more really embedded stuff to do your work on. Um, then in quarter four, the last quarter of the first year, we get into object-oriented C++ programming, and the other half of that course is interfacing to microcontroller hardware, that's in C++. And there's a new course about digital analog and analog electronics and, and the final project. Most of the other projects are by groups of four students, but the final project is individual and it's a sort of propedeuse graduation. You have to prove that you uh, are worthy of the rest of the uh, curriculum. And for us, you ha have to get uh, an Arduino Due, some peripheral chip, and show that you can interface to the peripheral chip from reading the data sheet, and you can abstract that to a library, document it, and then do some demo on it. And I don't care whether your effort is 10% in the library, 9% in the demo, or vice versa, but those elements must be present. And what they make uh, varies from uh, 
a plant monitoring and watering system to robots that drive around or laser tag or whatever. It, it doesn't matter if, as long as those parts are in it. I think that's the nicest course we have, except for one in the second one year. Then we're into the second year. Uh, it starts with a course in low-level programming. That's C++, but also uh, maybe 40% of the course is assembly, Cortex M0 or M3 assembly, and some C and interfacing between those two. So mixed language programming and the, the use of make files to automate things and how things work at a lower level. And the uh, uh, subject of the whole quarter is multithreading. So we also explain how multithreading works at assembly level. And we have a small multithreading uh, multitasking library who is explained in some depth so the students really know how such a thing works. And the other course is real-time modeling, UML and some local extension we have for modeling uh, uh, tasks and synchronization elements between tasks and in the project they must apply that on a laser tag system. So uh, one uh, apparatus sends infrared signals the other must receive it and simultaneously vice versa, and they score points and things like that. And if they're lazy, it's just the board with a few things hanging from it. If they're uh, more ambitious, it will be a 3D printed gun, or they buy some water gun and put it in it. And then uh, this year, one group added some ESP8266 to do Wi-Fi and think other things. Like that. So, you can do a lot of extras in the group project, but not everyone does that. There's a certain minimum you have to do, and the other rest is extra. Okay, that's quarter five, first one of the second year. And then uh, quarter six is less embedded, that's more high level programming. And so in C, it's, it's STL, resources, ownership. Uh, uh, only then we really talk about pointers. Uh, it's done in Microsoft, so you use a game library, and th the focus of that quarter is making a game on a PC-like platform. If they want to do it in Linux, it's fine, but basically we're doing it on, on Windows. And the accompanying uh, other uh, course is about data destruction algorithms, trees, hash maps, and things like that, and the, how you're programming, and a little bit about, about implication for order uh, uh, thinking. But that's not too much yet. And funny, that's done in Python. Well, Python again, but uh, when you do so, things, the language doesn't really matter that much. And Python is a little bit easier, and we like to have a little bit of Python on the side. Okay, that was first half of second year. Second half, second year, it's dominated by a large project where we throw all students together. It can be 50 or 60 and they play development department. They must come up with interesting projects, write, write a proposal for it, get it uh, accorded by the management. It's we. They must recruit other students or we assign them and they, uh, they play the role of project manager or people manager or test integrator or whatever. And that goes on for uh, uh, spread out, out over half a year and the uh, group shoots. Uh, differ, you should be in different groups, you will be dependent on things other groups have delivered but not not yet delivered, so it's really the, uh, uh, not only the technical, but, the, but also the, the, the interaction of a more complex working environment. And there are a few courses on the side, one about research, and one about vision, and one about uh, sensors, control, and uh, control algorithms. So it's just very applicable to robotics. Well, when we have finished this, we almost have finished the real technical informatics part that we have control of. We are back to the general curriculum. But there are two more courses. One is advanced programming, some functional programming, introspection in Python, and Python C++ integration. Uh, it's an interesting one that we, uh, the students must take. Um, uh, it's a hardware setup that mixes liquids, mm -hmm. called a laminator. It's a production device, but of course, when you start, you don't have the device. So we must develop a, 
a simulator of the hardware properties and a simulator of the user interface in Python, and then gradually in steps uh, proceed to the real device with C++ embedded, and there are in-between steps where Python and C++ are mixed. You have the simulator with simulator with the interface from the real hardware and the simulated user interface controlling the real hardware and things like that. So, and uh, another part of it is that the students have to plan where to do the tests because it differs much when you have full control of the Python or where you have the embedded part. And there is uh, an applied AI course, which is more about algorithmic things, not so much embedded, not really my stuff. And there's the big interdisciplinary project where well, our students have to work together with the other disciplines, with the network or the software interface, the user interface, or the business guys, or other ones. Um, so this is the summary of the C++ and other programming courses we have and the aspects we do in it. So, well, year one, quarter one is really introduction. As far as for your concern, it's a bit lost, it's, it, it's too little, but okay, it's shared with the other ones. In quarter three, we really start with basic procedural programming. End of first year, object orientation, hardware abstraction. So far, there, there's no STL and memory allocation, things like that. It's just static objects and uh, simple hierarchies. <laughs> then in the second year, there's low-level stuff, C++ uh, as some interaction, uh, templates, const, expert, and more of that kind of things. And then uh, quarter six in second year, there are the high-level things, maybe more traditional C++, STL and algorithms and uh, design patterns. Uh, in parallel with data structures, and then in the later year, still higher level uh, ideas about introspection, changing your program will fly, and Spine C++ integration. That's now well, how we build the knowledge and uh, how the curriculum is structured. Um, some recent changes we see in uh, uh, what's happening. Well, we are forced to, to integrate more with the other specializations. Uh, a few years ago, the first starting language was Java. I'm quite happy that that has changed to Python. Java has a lot of more uh, magic things you just have to do. And in Python, it's much less. You just type and it has less clutter, so there's less yeah, non-necessary things to learn. When I started teaching 15 years ago, it was the thing. There was one C++ course, and it was classical object orientation on a PC. Now we have four courses, double the size. That's our maybe uh, half of it dedicated to pure CC. The other half is software engineering aspects. So the C++ aspect has increased fourfold over the time. <coughs> and during the same time span, the uh, what I'm really interested in is, is in small microcontrollers that has progressed from uh, yeah, tiny, uh, where is my core cursor? It doesn't work, <laughs> whatever. Uh, from tiny microchip pick uh, microcontrollers that, that are things with uh, maybe 100 bytes of RAM, if you're lucky, all the way to Arduino Dewey's which have 100 kilobytes of RAM. So it's a very different way of programming and uh, uh, parallel our focus has changed from a direct hardware uh, interfacing in assembler to more abstraction-oriented programming. It, we still interface directly to the hardware registers, but immediately above that you put some abstractions. Not an object in the hierarchy, but abstractions so you have to de don't have to deal with the real hardware registers all over your program. So it's, uh, and we got our own laboratory, and our students are much more outreaching to conference and things like that, and uh, internet. It seems really, yeah, the amount of context explodes with what's happening. It's nice. We go to CodeDive, uh, uh, that's for them. If you go to Embo, well, we are here with two teachers, so the, the, there's more internationalization. I like that. Uh, when I started, we had mostly books we used. 
Scum's Home is a very classical, object-oriented C++ book. Uh, basically, I think it's C++ 89. And some C book. Uh, nowadays, we write our own readers. Uh, I have a few lying here. Uh, why is that? Uh, well, of course, I'm stubborn. I want to write my own material. But it's uh, difficult to find material that matches your curriculum. It's not just we want to teach C or C++ or whatever, but we have a whole matrix of interdependencies. There are a sequence of C courses, of C++ courses. They must uh, fit after in one another. Each one must be a specific size, must fit in one quarter. Uh, it must uh, support the other courses in that quarter. It must support a group project in which they can do really interesting and practical things. So it's, you can't just take a good book and use it in a course. And uh, a lot of books are oriented to somewhat academical use of a language, and we like to be very practical. They must immediately apply the things in the same quarter. Uh, most books are, are either for beginners or for second language learners, and we have students which are always in between somewhere. They have had a few courses, they get one more course, etc. And, well, it's difficult to find good books. It's even more difficult to find good books that are up to date with the current standards. I try to keep up. I think my readers are now up to C17, but I hope 20 will wait some time, so I have time to update it. And for the first year courses, we really prefer Dutch language material. For the next year, we prefer English. And of course, Dutch books are even more difficult to find. So we mostly use our own books, oh, except for that one. I like, really like game programming patterns, but I show only the front, not the back. But, uh, okay. So why do we skip C? Um, well, you saw over the years uh, the focus changes from direct hardware register interfacing to abstraction. And C++ supports that better, uh, where you use only strong typing or object hierarchies or whatever. It is easier to, to, to teach those concepts. Uh, there are no longer any subsequent C courses. So if you, if you do Python, C, C++, we have, would have two language bumps. And now we do Python, C++ all the way, so we only have one. Uh, well, there are, uh, for me, no longer interesting C-only targets. There are some chips for which there are no C++ uh, compilers, like the Marxist chip and the uh, AT51 type of chips, but they're not really that interesting for students anymore. You can buy uh, much more powerful chips really cheap in China, so why learn them to program those tiny chips? Uh, there are in C++ slightly less things you have to teach them, just do it that way, otherwise it will break, especially in the beginning courses, so that makes things a bit easier. Okay, and we avoid one more language transition pain. Of course, we lose the fact uh, our students can no longer program in pure C. Um, when that would be needed, I hope to provide a higher year course that would be C++ program with two hands tied behind your back. That's C. I, I have the idea that it would be easier for students, but I'm not sure. But uh, of course, well, there are also C programs needed, but we ha don't have to provide uh, uh, students for every job. Maybe C program is more for the electrical engineering type of guys. Okay, this is a white sheet, so it's not for me. It's for my colleague. Hello, uh, thank you. Uh, Do you want this? Uh, no, I already have okay. this uh, mic. Can I have the... Thank you. Um, so I got uh, the task to uh, design a course uh, without C, just uh, with C++. Uh, and I saw a lot of benefits in it, and I uh, hope to explain them to you. Uh, but first, uh, also an important question is uh, to ask, why is programming so hard? And the answer for me, at least, is it isn't. It isn't hard, but there's a lot to learn, uh, and we want to learn the students a lot in a very small amount of time. 
uh, we learn them to uh, cycle in one week, and the next week we say, great, you can cycle, now cycle uh, on a unicycle. And that's a pattern we uh, keep repeating and repeating and repeating, and it's pretty hard for the students, so they have never the feeling that they really fully understand what they're doing. So we have to offer some, them some guidance uh, in the lessons. And the first thing is, so what are we going to learn them? Well, we have to learn them syntax, uh, but we also have to learn them uh, how to solve problems. Uh, computational thinking, algorithmic thinking, all in my head, uh, same words for the same thing. Uh, but to do that, they also need to learn some syntax. <coughs> and the problem with that is that we often just give them the whole dictionary. Here, this is C++, this is C, and you have to know everything. Or even if you give a subset, uh, here's from the subset, everything in the smallest detail, and you have to know that. Um, and that's a problem. The heads of the students explode, and they don't have uh, the possibility anymore uh, to think about uh, the problem they want to solve. They're too busy with the, all the information they got from the syntax. And this is even this is the better case that the heads explode. You, you can hear that as a teacher. You can help them. The more problem is uh, are the students who are stuck inside their heads, say never, uh, don't say anything, are at home, and even quit uh, our education program. <coughs> um, so we decided uh, to focus our course, our first course, just on algorithmic thinking. Uh, the language, in our case C++, was more uh, the vessel, the, the tool they were going to use. Uh, so we don't really want, want it as less syntax as possible. So we took a look at uh, what was in the old course and what we could remove, and it's the list we removed from uh, uh, the syntax. So no switches, no do well, no static variables, uh, no main function, oh, well, our main function, but not in detail. Um, macros, uh, instead of arrays and C strings, we uh, used uh, the vector. Um, pointers were in this first year course, but we pla uh, placed it in another course. And instead of printf and scanf, uh, we used uh, c out and c in. And we just removed a lot of irrelevant details. Uh, this was in the first week of the course, uh, a table of how to save an, uh, an, an integer. Uh, it's in Dutch, some parts, but uh, how many bytes it takes, what the, the smallest number is, what the biggest number is, what the format specifier is. Why should you want to know that as a first year, you just want to solve your problem? And that's already hard. Uh, so we remove this table, and instead of that, we use a lot of examples. So we, we teach everything by example. Uh, here you see how to use an integer. The code is... Uh, you can copy-paste it from the reader uh, into your own IDE, run it, and it works always. Um, so there's an integer, but there are some uh, things with an integer. You can put a float in it. So another example, you put a float in it, what happens? Uh, well, we get another number. So now they know how to use an integer, which I think is a lot easier. So that's part of the details. But um, using C++ helps us also to remove other details. Uh, like printing, we need to have a format specifier, and you can have a lot of different ones, and we taught them all, because why not, <laughs> if we're busy. Uh, so that was not easy for the students. Students had to think about this, and you don't want them to think about it. So again, we uh, used examples, and we went to C out, because we again C++, and we can just print the character, and if they want, we want them to print something in another format, like a character as an integer, you just cast it to int. They already know it, they have a small course of Python, so it was an easy transi transition for them. And same thing uh, uh, with the input, uh, scan f, not really uh, great. Uh, we need the format specifier, but we also uh, already need references. We teach them references in week four, I guess, of the course. Um, but in the first week, looking at this is scary. Why is that sign now uh, for the for the virus? Why why already it needs it? It's weird. Uh, so we went for C in. Uh, works still all the way around the C out, so that's easy. And uh, sometimes you want to get the raw line. Well, we have the function get line. Perfect naming, easy to use. Um, but the main 
things we fixed, I believe, is uh, going to factor and stop using uh, the C array. Uh, the problem with um, finding a solution for a problem, if you want to help students with them, you would say, what is your starting situation and where do you want to go and how can you get those situations closest together? And the, if you're using C arrays, you can't return array or you have to also return the size. So if we want to make uh, find all the numbers that are bigger than X, like this function does, uh, we have also have our return value we have uh, in our parameters. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the context, the starting context, what's, um, what, what the parameters are, are intervened with also um, our result. In the end, we return the size of that array. If we use vectors, we can have a more, way more clear separation of what we need and what we want to end with. So we have uh, our parameters, just say, okay, we have a vector we're going to look at, we have a value we have to look for, and what do we want to end with is a type, vector int, and uh, then in the body we're going to fix it, and whereas our result, or, or, uh, we, we, result of our problem, uh, we can see at the end, clearly marked with the word return. So it made it a lot easier for students. If they only uh, write down uh, the function definition, they already know a definition of, the, of their problem. Uh, at the start uh, of a week, we already give this, so they have to only fill the body, and later on, they have to make their own function definitions. Uh, but this is not the only, only things we change. Uh, like I already said, uh, learning by example, we found uh, very important. There's no long explanations anymore. Our reader only co contains correct code, so no examples from, look at this, it creates an error. <laughs> and then they uh, put it in the IDE, and yeah, it creates an error, and they don't know what they're doing. Uh, so no uh, incorrect code. Uh, we added a lot of exercises, uh, and not only uh, writing and uh, writing exercises, but we also uh, added uh, reading exercises. Um, and each exercise had one clear goal. So uh, it was either syntax you had to learn, or you had to think, uh, you had to do computational thinking, and even within those subjects, also one learning goal. Learn how to use a for loop. Learn how to use a while loop, etc. Uh, but we still have some remaining challenges. I believe that we can make better and more exercises. Uh, you have things like parsing problems, uh, fill in the gaps, and so on. I think that's, those things help uh, with students. Um, and I don't like vector and recursion. Um, we want to teach them recursion. Uh, don't get me wrong, in, uh, with C arrays this is even worse. Uh, but uh, I want this, uh, this recursion function to uh, calculate the sum. And we want to make the vector smaller and smaller. Uh, and now I have artificially created two sizes. So the vector itself has a function size. So the vector has a size. And I give as parameter I have a size that gets smaller and smaller. And I don't really like it. There are other solutions, but I think this is even the best one I can come up with. Uh, if someone has a su suggestion to fix this, I uh, appreciate it. Um, and our results. Um, well, uh, the students are way more better in procedural uh, programming, uh, thinking about the problem and how to fix it. And they can be, become better in debugging their own code. Um, they used to get stuck in, is it a problem with my syntax? Is it a problem with my logic? And then they just started changing things at random. And then the code get even worse. And then they just gave up. Uh, but students are now more confident, have more fun, um, which is really important if you want to teach them something. Uh, so that's great. And uh, yeah, well, about already said it, we have no transition pain anymore in the first week of the next course, uh, which is about object-oriented programming. Uh, so they have more time also to understand uh, the new course. So that's my part. So I give it back to Bauta. Back to Blue. Okay. Uh, our conclusion is we stopped teaching C. So far we like it. Uh, teaching the better C subset of C++ is slightly easier than teaching C itself right, for the same kind of subject. You often hear the argument, C++ is much more complex than C. 
But if you compare a certain set of tools, those tools in C are slightly more complex than in C++. It's a difficult comp compared. Of course, the whole language is much more com uh, complex. And uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, we don't cater for C programmers anymore. So, uh, yes, it's uh, questions. Deep silence. Deep, deep. Ah, of course, Odin has a question. No, there's no template meta program in the first year. No, there isn't. Yes, Odin has a question. Um, I think this is kind of the problem of our industry that nobody's teaching bare metal developers very well. Uh, like wearing my consultant hat, I don't think I've been into a company this year that didn't want to double their dev team if they could actually find the people. <laughs> um, is there a dialogue between schools about how to do this right? Or do you think other schools are aware of the problem? Um, I'm not sure. The, the, I don't have uh, too much contact with other uh, Dutch uh, education institutions, sadly. No time for it yet. And uh, even within the Netherlands, uh, the term technical informatics can mean anything from electrotechnical all the way to GUI uh, programming. And we're somewhere in between, so we don't even agree about the term. So I don't even know which institution to go to to get comparable uh, curricula. So there's, there's a challenge in that. <laughs> um, what does the feedback loop look like? Like, if this is successful, who's going to pat you on the back, or is anyone going to even notice? Uh, I can do it myself. <laughs> or I can do it, Johanna. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, back in the bus from CoDive with all the students, we uh, established a response group from the students, which will hopefully keep us uh, informed. Uh, the, uh, of, of course, there is uh, polls among the students. Uh, we get to look at the exit figures, the, uh, but uh, the technical subject tends to uh, attract a certain weird kind of students, so there are all kinds of fallouts. And we don't know what they went doing back to China or back into their cocoon of, or what, I don't know. So it, it's very difficult to correlate study success with what we do. And study success uh, vary by the year ex, uh, in extreme uh, numbers. So it's very difficult to get good feedback. So a lot of feedback is just anecdotal for, from the students we talk to and our own gut feelings. Oh, of course. Uh, well, if you don't have any more questions, we have questions to you. Ah. Are we doing this right? Is this the right direction? Uh, should we do more C, more Assembler, more Python, more C++? I hope you're industry, so maybe you know what you need. Well, since I have the mic, I'm just going to speak for everybody and say you're doing this right. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> We are going to continue the questions, but we are going to also start building up for Rainer, who is next to us, well, talking about oh, guidelines. So am 